for years now, while the Mitsubishi brand has languished here in the US, other parts of the world have been enjoying the Outlander PHEV. It's Europe's best-selling plug-in hybrid, and Mitsubishi has been improving on it over the years, testing it, refining the technology and punishing the vehicle in competitions like the Baja Port Allegra 500 and the Asia Cross Country Rally. Now, as electric vehicles begin to gain greater acceptance, and as Mitsu turns its brand around, it will finally offer the Outlander PHEV in America at the end of this year. Sitting inside the Outlander PHEV, we were actually pleased with the interior. It was simple and clean, and the plastics didn't feel especially cheap. Sure, it wasn't the thoughtful design or plush touchpoints of the other available plug-in crossovers on the market, but the Outlander PHEV also doesn't share the same price tag. We definitely found it to be more attractive and appealing than the inside of, say, a Chevrolet Equinox. If you were expecting a pile of hot garbage from Mitsubishi, you're way off. When we popped open the rear lift gate to take a look, we found our near-ideal tailgating vehicle. In the rear cargo area was a ton of space, a large speaker, cup holders, and a standard three-prong outlet, perfect for plugging in a slow cooker, blender, or any other appliance you could find useful at a football game or campsite. Later, when we would take a break from our drive at Catalina Island's Shark Harbor, we'd be treated to a smoothie prepared in a blender plugged into that AC outlet. If you happen to use all 12 kilowatt hour of energy, the gas engine will fire up to serve as a generator. The Toyota 4Runner may have had the party mode button, but the Outlander PHEV would be our pick for the stadium parking lot. As we passed through a gate at the edge of the town of Avalon and headed up a dirt road across the interior of Catalina Island, we were quickly impressed with the way the Outlander PHEV handled the rocky, dusty trails from which most drivers are normally prohibited. The steering feel was light but communicative, and we were really able to tell what was going on between the front wheels and the rugged surface beneath them. It remained composed in the corners, its low center of gravity and super all-wheel control, SHOC, four-wheel drive system minimizing roll and providing stability. It took a fair amount of effort to get this thing to give up any traction, and we weren't keen on attracting the ire of Conservancy Rangers by flagrantly breaking the island's 25 mph per hour speed limit on blind corners to do so. The car has two suites of drive modes, one automatic, the other selected by the driver. The car will automatically choose between all electric, parallel hybrid, using both the gasoline and electric motors to drive the wheels, and series hybrid, gas motor works as a generator, driving. It selects whichever of the three modes will provide the most efficient driving under the current driving situation, whether cruising through town or on the highway, or towing or driving uphill. The three driver selectable modes are chosen via buttons on the center console. The F button makes all electric driving a priority, but the gas engine can still come on if the situation, low charge or heavy acceleration, for instance, requires it. The battery save button maintains up to 90% of the battery's charge, that extra 10% allows room to take advantage of the regenerative braking without wasting that free energy. Battery charge mode keeps the engine running in order to charge the lithium-ion battery, making sure you always have enough power when you need it. We found that the vehicle had ample power climbing the steep Catalina hills in EV mode, and if the engine ever came on, we didn't notice. When not in EV mode, the engine was still quiet, and we only heard it working hard when we were really pushing the car with a low charge. 